Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Daily Carrington, and if you're a return subscriber, love for the love, my G's. So, this is a drive with me. I filmed a drive with me about a month ago, maybe. Okay, is it a month ago? Almost, maybe it is a month ago because I got my car, Stacey. December I'm lying wow I got Stacy January the 10th and I filmed that maybe about the first week of having her so almost a month ago and I thought I should film one again today it is around 5 p.m. so it's going to get dark as I do this vlog but I thought it would be quite a nice touch for a nighttime effect in the vlog you know but anyway oh, it's going dark but I thought it would be very lovely to start my vlog and get it a-going. I am going for a drive, so I thought, what a better time to come and talk to you guys. I do have a couple videos planned, so I do have my Jamaica vlog, which is coming. I don't know if it's coming tomorrow, which is Sunday, and I want it to, but I'm not sure. If not, it's coming Monday, Monday the 26th of February. But in saying that i do then have my birthday vlog and actually i don't know if my jamaica vlogs mean two parts if my jamaica vlogs in two parts well then more content for you if it's not in two parts then enjoy it how it is <laughs> but um i then have my birthday vlog and then i have my valentine's vlog which is also joseph's birthday and like other events i went to in that week but i thought let me do this as well which is going to be my drive me as i've already said and this video circling back is essentially going to be um just a chit chat you know i i when i did my first drive of me i realized how much i enjoyed being in the car talking to you guys because i feel like we've got a personal relationship and we talk about things you know because when i say something in my vlogs you guys will actually come back in my comments and ask about it and if not on my vlogs on my tiktok and if not on my tiktok i've been getting dms and people have been like coming back to me asking questions about things that i've said on a vlog and i'm like this is so nice i'm actually saying these things when people are actually taking me in you know because sometimes it does feel like when you are vlogging you're not talking to anyone but it's like we're kind of friends oh look at me being such a good vlogger this is a full circle moment i guess it's only been like what three minutes but it's a full circle moment because today i want to talk about friendships friendships we've all got a friend and i know people love to say nowadays oh i have no friends i don't have a friend i'm pretty sure somewhere somehow or somebody you have a friend and i would say friendships in the last two years i've learned the most about friendships that i've ever learned in the entire 22 ah oh, i'm 22 i'm so old in my entire 22 years of life and i feel like i've learned so much about friendships because as i've gotten older and i've gotten into new things i've begun to see people's i want to say true colors is that the right word? Yes, I'm gonna say true colors. I've, as I've gotten older, I've realized people, how people are and their characteristics, you know? I feel like when you're younger and you have friendships, you're more naive to the fact of, how can I say it? You're more naive to the fact of blurring out, oh, the camera's gone dark. Can my camera be normal? Oh, you're more naive to the fact of... <sighs> Can it stop being like this? Okay guys, my camera is being so dark and I don't want to lose my trail of thought. Okay guys, I've just got to accept that my camera's gonna change lighting as it gets darker. But I was saying that when you're younger, you're more naive to the fact that in certain friendships, things aren't all peachy and that certain things in a friendship shouldn't be going a certain way and I have numerous examples and one of my most cutthroat examples I have of that is I had a good friend and she would she would display tendencies tendencies to me that showed signs of jealousy and I would literally overlook them and <laughs> when I look back now it's so it's so crazy to me that I allowed these things to be 
occurring in a friendship where I should have felt safe, I should have felt seen, I should have felt loved, you know? And meanwhile, it was basically her being jealous. She would make comments, I don't know if I've said it on my channel before, but she would make comments such as, why does my boyfriend do things for me and hers doesn't? And why do I have this? And why can't her boyfriend be like mine? And just, at the time I thought it was really minor comments, but the more you start to think about this and you start to share, it with your other friends you realize or your siblings or your family you start to realize that signs of jealousy in friendship is actually very very real and i want to preface it by saying jealousy in friendship is not bad until it gets to the point where it's jealousy that like oh i'm jealous you've got pink boots and i don't and oh you know i love that few kind of jealous compared to the jealousy whereas i'm jealous of you and i want to beat you up and that's and to me that's how it started feeling <laughs> when my friend that I thought it was something I could confide in was literally jealous of me and then as time gone on like the friendship had to go or whatever that was point one of me relearning friendships as an adult and I don't like to consider myself as, a, as an adult because I like to say that I'm young I am but I feel like as you get out of your teens and into your early 20s you really start to clock things that you would not have clocked on before because the naivety of being in in sixth form and then early days of uni do you know what i mean like those naive moments you really let things slide which in actual fact you shouldn't let happen because why do you have to be 18 19 20 dealing with rubbish friends like it doesn't make any sense and so i thought i had you know kind of gotten rid of things like that but then as time goes on you realize that's not always the case like bro <laughs> like, I, i'm not trying to dog anyone out of my friends or like, any of my mutuals or my old friends but this is just my personal experience and this has really been on my heart to talk about and i feel like on my channel i want to discuss these things because i know that i'm not the only one who's i'm not crazy i'm not the only one who's experiencing these things so let me talk my ish you know <sighs> how can i say this when you get older and you have friends and how can I say this? I'm trying to say this in a really articulate way, but also not an offensive way. I think what I'm trying to get at is when you get older, your trajectory of life changes. So I would say from about sixth form, things in life aren't how they were in, no, from about uni. Things in life aren't the same because once you finish sixth form, not everybody goes to university, obviously. It's, it's a personal choice. But we do uni, apprenticeship, you do you defer a year or whatever you choose is your path right from that point that's when in life things change and that's when in life you start to see your friends for who they are because when you start doing different things you can kind of tell the real from the fake <laughs> not the real from the fake but you can kind of tell the beta from the alpha i can't explain it so what i'm trying to say is when i was when you're younger everyone's always doing things at the same time so you kind of all you all go through things because it's of school you kind of go through the same stage of life at the same time and once you get over that sixth form phase everything's at different troughs and peaks and not everyone's life is always going to look the same and for me i realized that a lot that once i got into things such as like once I got back on YouTube, once I went to camp, once I started doing things that weren't necessarily of the norm, that's when I started to notice that within my friends that the love or the support wasn't there. And I'll be honest, I don't expect, I don't know if this is weird, but I don't expect any of my friends to watch my YouTube channel. I don't expect nothing of them. And I feel like I kind of mentally prepared myself for that because I feel like, there's this, like, you always see those kind of quotes being like, the most people that are going to support you in this life will be a stranger, and it's so true, and I realise that the most with YouTube, I realise that, that the most with Cass, the most people that in my life that really go hard for me are strangers, and this is not to say that my personal friends don't be supporting me, don't be watching my YouTube, because there are certain friends out there that do watch my channel, and I can bet on when this comes out, they're going to message me about this, and we'll have a conversation about it because this is true i also know then again there are certain friends that have probably never clicked on my video in their lives but i can't i don't know it's weird because i can't say that i hate them for that because i don't hate anybody <laughs> let's get that straight i can just say that growing up you've got to realize these certain things that 
just because somebody's your friend doesn't mean they'll be there for you in every stage and they'll be there for you in every single thing you do and every I think you do know what I mean because it's kind of hard for you, especially someone like me who does a lot it's kind of hard for people to shop for you in every single aspect but it's also very loving that if again you're like me you have loads of different aspects of your life that your friend shop for you at least one and I would find that when I was doing multiple things that certain people in my life weren't show up, showing up for me in any and personally the way it would make me feel is as if that I was doing too much and I just want to say for anyone that's watching this video never ever be made to feel like you're doing too much you're not doing enough in fact doing too much means crap if anyone has ever told you you're doing too much you do not need that person in your life and not me being a motivational speaker <laughs> but you don't need that person in your life you don't need that kind of energy you don't need that kind of negativity around you because if someone that's considered to be your friend is telling you that you're doing too much that should show you from the jump that they do not give a heck about you and they're sick and tired of you this reminds me when I had a friend <laughs> ah! Oh my days and I would always post on my private Instagram always on my fence though always on my fence like I love my fence like it's my like like it's my, my left arm no I love my left arm because I need my left arm and she was like I'm gonna unfollow your fence because you post too much on there and why do you post so much on fence star she's like every single day I post you're posting you're posting I was like no she didn't even say she'd unfollow I was like if it's too much then unfollow me then if me posting on my fence is too much for you then we should not be in the same facility like you don't need to be here it's not um by force it's not if you're gonna be leave your since you're gonna die if me do you know what i mean and i feel like that's when i first started clocking weird tendencies and i feel like if anyone has said to you any who anyone who's watching this vlog right now that you're too much and that you should you should dim yourself down or you should water or whatever yourself just to please them I don't swear but F them do you, do you get what I mean like I don't swear but F them nobody should come and tell you that you're doing too much or nobody should come and tell you that you're you know because it's like you're supposed to be my friend in fact if you're my friend and you see I'm doing something you should be rooted for me like oh my days yes go Gina go Gina you shouldn't be saying oh stop Gina stop Gina like do you get it and that's when i started realizing mm, yeah and i get again if you're someone like me it can be kind of a lot to ask for because okay let's think about log logistically i have a youtube channel i have a tiktok i have uh instagrams i have my business there's lots of things i have and i suppose it's a lot for everyone to be keeping up with daily carrington on every single app but i see as i'm not begging you but i don't know i i honestly can't explain it to the full extent i want to explain it to because i don't want anyone to get offended but i've just noticed that it can be hard for certain people and you know i do try to sympathize and understand where people are coming from if they're ever like oh but there are certain circumstances where you can tell that a friend is generally not your friend compared to someone that just literally can't keep up with you and 10 other apps should I get it because I post a lot and you do post a lot hashtag follow my youtube channel I mean <laughs> hashtag like and subscribe um and follow my instagram my tiktok and my snapchat that I promoted in my Jamaica vlog anyways so that's what I had to say and another thing which I have noticed so in saying this all I also believe that you shouldn't have to ask your friends to do certain things for you I feel like if we're being so logistical and so frank you choose your friends right you don't choose your family you choose your friends everybody knows this this is actually rule 101 i'm not saying anything out of the blue here but in you choosing your friends if somebody wants to be your friend they should want to want to show up for you you know i feel like again when i when i started my business cast collection shop cast collection when i started my business it was a very it was a turning point in my life because i feel like I was second year in uni, was I second year in uni? I was, when I first thought about starting my business, I was going into third year of uni, tell a lie. And I started my, my business in my final year of uni, 
and I had businesses before Cass Collection. I had C by C Aaliyah, which was fluffy slides I used to make. Then I had Cass Colors, where I used to dye hair. And then I had Cass Vegan Bakes. <laughs> then I had Cass Collection. I've been rinsing out Cass, boy. It was crazy because I never really intended to start another business again, but I'll get into that business in another video. Not in this though, but I'll touch it just a little smidge. I had decided I was gonna start a business and it was kind of daunting. And it was kind of like, oh, here she goes again, starting another thing. But I thought, again, if you're my friend, you shouldn't be vexed I'm starting another thing. You should be, you should be, um, you should be proud of me that I'm taking a new adventure, I'm starting something else, and, you know, I'm trying to make this really work. So I kind of did uni, I graduated, I got a first. If you've not seen my vlog, you should watch the vlog where I got my first. My business kind of took off. And I would say I have, I have, I, can, I my friends, I have certain friends who, when I first started Cass, up until now, I can tell you they've, they've really gone hard for her. As I'm saying her as if Cass is another business, as, as if Cass is a person, my business. And I would notice these things where I would come to my friend and, and tell them about Cass and they would have genuine interest and genuine happiness and genuine joy for my business and that for me that would be so heartwarming that my friend had the the love do you know what i mean and i suppose when you see like when you're going to be an entrepreneur or you're going to, or anything of those kind of um stuff i can't think of the word it is quite daunting, especially when majority of your friends, they have a traditional nine to five, they have a really good job in the banking world, in the economics world, do you know what I mean? And you're doing something that's, sim that's different. It can be kind of daunting. But I would say that my friends who have shown that this is what it is, they've given me so much love and support. And if I go to anyone and be like, okay, I've got this idea of cast, what do you think? My friends, they'll, do you know what I mean? They'll give me that kind of advice and advice and love that I think that I would want in my friends, you know? And it 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 started making me realizing that when I had friends in my life that weren't showing me the same love and support as my other friends were, it was kind of like a turning point. And I say this because I don't want anyone else to feel how I felt when I had a friend in my life and it kind of, to me, it kind of felt like dead weight. Not, it kind of felt like to me a one way situation. And I love the Receipts podcast. If like, I've mentioned Receipts on cat on my YouTube channel so many times. Tolly often says that she would have friends in her life where when she left them, she felt drained rather than filled up. And it, it wasn't like an equilibrium of I'm filling you up, you're filling me back up. It was a little one-sided thing. And it wasn't, I'm not gaining anything out of it apart from fickle things, you know? And I would start to feel like that with, with certain people in my, in my life. And then once I started CAS, although their line of expertise weren't in fashion, it was in a more serious shop. I felt I could come to them for advice, you know? And of course, I would go to my mom and my sisters for advice. But it was nice to have a friend outside of family and outside of fashion that would know what to say and then when i realized that there were friends in my life that i would i couldn't even begin to talk to about cast because i felt there was no no not common ground but there was no care and um tenderness towards it and i don't know if you guys have ever had a situation where you have someone in your life and you you care deeply for but you realize one day this is a one-sided thing or this is a thing where I don't think it's adding any value to my life and I I hate to be that person that entrepreneur person who has now woke up one day and be like oh you're not adding value to my life uh, I can go make 10 million pounds in one minute and da -da 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 -da. but I think when you start to look at life differently when you take a different route you start to realize things aren't all what it's cracked up to be do you know what I mean I don't know if I'm making sense here or if I'm rambling because I don't I know that I usually do talk to you guys in vlogs but because i'm talking on one specific top i can't say that word right now specific specific topic it i don't know if it's articulating well as i would like it to i hope so i don't know man just a girl but <laughs> but i would 
I would literally think it's not fair that I feel like I can't go to this certain friend and discuss I don't know, because I, I used to say a lot that I have certain friends for certain reasons, but now as I've matured, I, I realise, what's the point of having certain friends for certain reasons? Because if I can't, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know how I feel about that, because I used, I used to be swear by certain friends certain reasons, but now I feel like it's nice to have a friend that you can have an all-rounded friend, that I can come and ask you how's the job search going, or I can come and ask you how's the cats do you know so i don't think i believe in one friend for one reason i you should re be able to have informed conversations with your friends for example elizabeth and i we often have our, our conversation about the politics and the government and it's it's not things i would usually discuss with elizabeth but it's so riveting <laughs> and it's nice to have conversations with friends that you wouldn't usually have and then to have an all-rounder friend where you can discuss anything rather than having to go to your friend for only 30 percent of your life you can literally talk to them about everything that's going on and i, I do you know what i mean i don't think i believe in that whole narrative one friend for one reason and i think when i started realizing i don't believe that anymore it kind of made me realize that, that I don't need certain vibes. Do you know? I don't know. I don't know because I don't want anyone to see this and be really offended. But this is my YouTube. This is my safe space. And I, I haven't mentioned any names apart from Elizabeth just there. But I said something nice about Elizabeth. So, yeah. You know? So, it, 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 it makes sense. And I feel like also where I was getting my hair done the other day. As you can clearly tell and uh, Mary and I were discussing friendship groups and I don't have a friendship group anymore and I feel like when you go from having a solid friendship group from secondary school when you go from having a solid friendship to not having a friendship group it can you can feel so isolated so lonely so alienated so so alone it's nuts like, I, I know i'm smiling right now but when i look back at the time when my friendship group first um i'd say broke up it was really a uh, upsetting time for me and i would i would actually have days where i was so down and i was it you don't realize how much friendships take a toll of you until you're in the real world i don't know because obviously in secondary school not obviously but in secondary school you can have loads of friendship problems and yeah you might get over it tomorrow whatever you'll be friends again whatever but when you're in the adult world and people have bigger fish to fry and if the friendship's done the friendship's done it, it seems so cutthroat so final so raw do you know what i mean if you've ever experienced like a friendship group breakup comment below because i i want to know if it's not just me <laughs> when my friendship group deteriorated i kind of felt so alone because when you have like a core foundation of girls where you're they're literally your everything and if you're coming on snapchat for me snapchat was the place where it was like me and my girls Instagram, me and my girls every minute our group chat was popping we're sending things in we're laughing we're giggling we're sending videos we're going out we're going on meetings we're going away we're doing all sorts of things and it's so nice to have that core group of girls where it's just it's just you you lot do you know what i mean and when you stop having that it's so it's devastating it, it is it's, it's devastating because when you're used to having something so accessible and so um loving and do you know what i mean it, it can be so i need to stop saying the word so how many times i'm gonna say so in one sentence oh my days it's highly upsetting and i think once the friendship group of mine kind of um deteriorated that's when i really started looking at friendships in a different way because now i'm that girl that has individual friends and i just see them individually i guess i suppose some of my friendships now have kind of linked together but for the most part it's basically just individual friends and i think i think individual friends does, does work but it is hard to go from a friendship group to individual friends once you're used to having a core foundation of girlies do you know what i mean for me it was a, a pivotal moment in my life for realizing that i was kind of dependent on it i don't know 
so like I said, Snapchat and Instagram were literally the core foundations of our friendship group. And I message to be fair. Um, but for the core foundation of our friendship groups. So it got to the point where I stopped using Snapchat. My, my, I only recently started using Snapchat again, like properly. Although even still now, I'm not on it again. I'm, I'm so hot and cold, yes and no. Shout out to Kate Perry. Um, but it got to the point where my Snapchat memories for the month will be like three memories. It's, it's, it's nuts. And I stopped using Snapchat because Snapchat to me was literally the place where I would always be with my girls, you know, like that was our place where we would giggle. And it was a thing for me where I had to realize and understand friendships all over again. And I also kind of felt, wow, I'm in the real world now again. Friendship breakup happens, cool, you gotta get on life. You got you got uni assignments to go through, you got this to go through, you got that to go through, get on with it. Compared to a secondary school, if I wasn't a friend with someone, I know it would be different because a secondary school, you're in like a bubble. In the real world, you're so separated when you go to different unis, when you've got different jobs. Life doesn't, again, life doesn't wait. Oh, full circle. Think people move at different paces and people get to things at different times. So it's like, ah, you know? And I would say for anyone who has ever gone through a friendship breakup or is going through a friendship breakup, friendship group breakup, not just friendship breakup, it can be so isolating. But I just want you to know there is light at the end of the tunnel because me, I was very upset and I would say, my camera stopped recording for no reason, but I saw storage, that was weird. Yeah, I was basically saying that I would I would confide in them origin in I would confide in my friends individually how I felt about the friendship breakup. All parts were just saying, you know what, Carrington, it is what it is, it's life. You just gotta get used to having your friends separate. And now I have, but I would say sometimes it still does kind of hurt not having that foundation that I I adored so heavily and I I cherished. And when you look back at things now in hindsight, hindsight is such a beautiful yet yeah, a painful thing. It's the moments that you realize that, ugh, you know? I, I don't know. Like I was saying, if you've been through a friendship breakup or a friendship group breakup, comment below, because I need to know. But you, you will get through it. Friendship breakups are different. I think friendship breakups, period, they just hurt. <laughs> they hurt because the same friend I was telling you guys about that, um, she was actually jealous of me saying all kinds of craziness about uh, my boyfriend and, and all that kind of crap when our friendship finally demised I was hurt about it and to this day I was hurt I'm hurt about it but honestly I'm an entrepreneur now bigger fish to fry if you can't make a hundred days <laughs> just kidding no but um friendships I would say friendship breakups are different to any kind of our pain because it's like I thought we were gonna be bridesmaids together. I thought we was gonna name our children with the names of each other. Not literally, but you know what I mean. It's just so like, why would we do this? Why would we? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> ah, gosh, man, such is life. But yeah, that is pretty much all. And what I also would say is that growing up again circling back to growing up it has taught me a bit more to be less dependent on friendships because i would say when my friendship group broke up it kind of showed me it kind of showed me that in this life you're really alone and yes of course that you have family you have other friends and you have partners but you're really alone and it did show me that if you want to carry on certain friendships and you want to carry on certain relationships you have to put the effort in because although my friendship group has now demised i still have very much love for every part of um the equation but it's literally up to you whether you feel like you can continue because it can be hard there have been times when i've tried to organize something and I was like oh I wish I could invite so and so or I wish that we could do it all together but I think time will tell and life will tell you never know okay my camera officially ran out of storage but I fixed it 
but I think that's all I wanted to touch on today. Friendships were just heavy on my heart, in my mind. It was on my mind a lot, I think, because, oh, they're doing police stops. Hate to be them. Hate to be them. But I just think that I want to know what you guys have to say and your opinions. I want to know whether you've ever experienced friendship jealousy and whether your friendship jealousy situation you was able to come back from it or whether you was able or whether you had to um sever the relationship i want to know if you guys have ever experienced a friendship group breakup like when the when 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 what do you call it when one direction broke up it was heartbreak i was not a 1d fan but i felt for the girls man I felt for the girls they were so upset their favorite guys are breaking up <laughs> i don't know if you guys have ever experienced friendship group heartbreak and it needs to finish my sentence before I got distracted because it's not something I often hear about especially in a modern not modern especially in a 20 year old setting early 20s setting I would mainly hear about it in secondary school and I want to know if you guys have experienced any friendship um I want to say disappointment yeah friendship disappointment and I say friendship is disappointment because I explained to you guys that I had a certain friend who I felt that when I was starting certain um, adventures one wasn't sorry showing the love and expression love and attention or care you could say not necessarily attention that I would expect from someone I called a friend compared to some of my subscribers which I love every single one of my subscribers Bread to 10k <laughs> and yeah and i just didn't expect it do you know what i mean so friendship disappointment friendship group breakup and friendship jealousy i did very much enjoy filming this drive with me with you guys i think it's gonna be a good video i don't know when it's gonna come out because i've got as you know i've got a whole roster of vlogs to come out i think what i'm gonna do i'm gonna make my drive with me um my drive with me sequences uh, a monthly thing so I've got a January one, I've got my February one, and then my next one will be my March one. Yeah, I think a monthly sequence. And if they continue to do very well, I might make it um, a twice a month kind of thing. And we'll do a different topic each month or each twice a month. Um, yeah, so let me guys, let me know what you guys think about that idea. Because it can actually be quite cool. And I know my last draft me did quite good. I think it got 2k views views but um yeah that's pretty much it i think i've covered all the aspects that i wanted to say today um comment below which the march topic should be and comment below everything else i asked for and yeah i think that's all if you made it to this point in the video i appreciate you so much if you've watched this whole entire video you've not liked or subscribed i would please kindly ask you to like comment and subscribe okay a comment might be a reach because i know some people don't want their youtube name to be commented on everything and everything fine i get it but a like and a subscribe does go a long way especially when i'm trying to grow my channel and be consistent and i would also say share and tell a friend to tell a friend words of kojo funds and that is all i'll catch you guys in my next video thank you so much for watching and bye guys